it is the a custom uh, in a traditional Jewish family for the groom to have a special ceremony the week or so before his marriage. He is called up to the, uh, the, the Torah, he has a special blessing, and he chants a special prayer. And sometimes uh, the uh, okay. bride-to-be is called up to do something also. And that's very important. Okay. Yes, it's, and as I said, it's very traditional. And just recently, our grandson did that. Oh, so, that must have been exciting for both of you. Yes, it was. Just about it was. We, we did get there, you know, in our chairs and carts and oh, so good. on. Oh, good. But it was, it was very sentimental and lovely. And many, many people were there. Well, I found the, the dedication book. And 1932 was when the synagogue was dedicated. I think Rabbi Hill and Silver spoke for the dedication. Wow. wow. He's a uh, very famous rabbi from um, Congregation to Fareth Israel in, in Cleveland. Yes. Silver, and they call it the Silver's Temple. It was known as Silver's yeah, Temple. Yeah, and it's on in University Circle around Wade Park. And it was a, a speech that he gave in before the UN at the time that affected the vote of, uh, of Israel being able to become a, a country, a state. Mr. Goldberg, you were going to thank you for sharing that. Mr. Goldberg, you were going to say, you started to say something about him, about the rabbi? Rabbi Silver, he's yeah. one of the top rabbis in the country. He had a, he was a wonderful speaker. In fact, Brilliant orator. In the later years, he spoke one time at uh, Lorraine High School graduation. Oh. Uh, he was the speaker. Rabbi, Rabbi Hill and Silver. Didn't his son follow him? Didn't his son follow yeah, in his son steps? followed him. I thought I remember and that. Unfortunately, he, he was very active in the involved. community. Some yes, he did follow. Affairs. I had some recollection of that. Right, that's a good memory. Mm -hmm. Now, as I say, after I came home from the service and we merged, I mean, we joined, to put it this way, okay. gave up and giant decided to join the, the uh, uh, Nine Street congregation. I became active there, of course, and became a I remember the Board of Trustees in Lady Yard, and I took part in services in, you know, in health and so forth. When I was in the Army, many times we were located in camps where they didn't have a, a Jewish chapel. So I uh, frequently conducted religious services at the camp where I was at. Was there a, were there enough for a minion? Yes. That was good. <laughs> yeah, never enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, sometimes it's when we had a chaplain, who kid was a rabbi from when I was in Fort Benjamin Harrison, Indiana, they didn't have a chaplain because uh, there was a they were shipping out and coming in and so forth. The rabbi from uh, Indianapolis would come in. It was about 45 minutes away, and sometimes they couldn't come. So the uh, Jewish USO director would contact me to make sure if I could conduct services. And for how many years were you a Gabbai? In Lorraine? Mm -hmm. Forever. <laughs> a Gabbai. I think he still is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he still is. Tell them what a Gabbai is, because that's a very important role. In the workings of the synagogue and seeing that little things are taken care of is who participates in the service, who gets called up for honor, who does certain things. You know. So uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's a popular job and sometimes it's not. it isn't because you get <laughs> criticized. You, know. you have to make sure you don't give too many honors to one and not enough to the other. You know. And so but he has kept records. I yeah. even kept a record after service. He has all these names. And marked out who got certain honors on certain days so I don't know. So that's yeah. your fear. So, so he fair. is fair. 
And then he also, uh, Agavai also, when the, the rabbi is reading the Torah, can correct them because they, the Gavai reads it from a prayer book. Uh, it's called a Chumash, which is the five books of Moses. And, um, but the person reading from the actual Torah does not have the privilege of having vowels to help them read the words. And um, the Gabai would do the corrections of that person because you can't read the Torah wrong. You have to be letter perfect in your reading. So then you have to be careful because sometimes <clears throat> some of the Torah readers are a little don't like it when you correct them too often. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to do it very quiet. <laughs> So that's a big responsibility. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know, it's uh, sort of ironic. Um, there was the an obituary in today's paper about someone who passed away from Lorraine. His name is was Rudy Sorrell. He was a good friend of the family. I encountered him in Honolulu. Huh. During the war. In the, during during the war. You may have seen him. He, the oh yeah, he did Fiddler on the Roof. He did Fiddler on the Roof. He was mm -hmm. famous for that. Yeah, it said how many times he did it—over a <laughs> hundred or a delightful character. Yes, very nice.